You're not the only one. Oh man. <laughs> All right, we're rolling. Great. Well, good morning, everybody. Happy Friday. Good morning. Good morning. Bless. We made it. I know. I know. It was a close one. It was a close one for sure. <laughs> we say that every week, I feel like. I know, we do. But it feels that way. Somehow it's been hot and busy and just kind of a, you know, we're all yeah. on pins and needles about the school stuff. Shoo. Yeah. Tur- well, speaking of the temperature, Turner was telling me earlier this week that uh, you ran the Atlantic Beach Bridge and it said it felt like 99. Is that right? Uh, not if felt like 93 at five in the morning and uh, questioning my life decisions. <laughs> that's terrible. Also, you're running the Atlantic Beach Bridge. That's, that's your first mistake. <laughs> Just kidding. That's good. Well, with a that's body good. like this, you kind of have to. Oh, man. I love it. Well, y'all, good morning. Good morning. Oh, so good morning. thank you guys so much for, for joining us here. We have got Michael Turner here with us today. And, um, you know, I think that all of us, especially the parents, but I know grandparents and friends and and everyone is anxious to hear what's going to happen with our kids and how we are going to navigate moving forward since the governor came out on Tuesday and basically said that for our public schools, going back to school full-time in person is really not on the table at this point. Um, So trying to figure out what that looks like moving forward. And, you know, we've had a chance to kind of catch up with Michael a little bit before we hop on here. And I can tell you guys that he's got some great information that he is bringing us as a person, right? Not as a representative of Carteret County Public Schools, but as a friend and someone who is involved in the process and someone who has kids who are enrolled in Carteret County Public Schools. So somebody who cares a lot about the outcome here. Um, And I know I feel better just talking to him about the care that is going into making these decisions and the way that it's all being handled. So I hope that you guys will too. And there's a call to action for everybody who's a parent out there watching because there are surveys that we need to be filling out. So we're going to get Michael involved in telling us about that too. But Meg is actually Michael's assistant coach for girls volleyball at West Carteret. And so she's going to tell us a little bit about Michael because she sure does know some great stuff. So oh, I certainly do, don't we? So before, before I get started into telling you guys who Michael is, I actually call him Turner, and a lot of folks call him Turner. So I, I want, where, where did that come from? Who started calling you Turner? Man, that is, that is as old as uh, teaching. When I started teaching in 2000, I was 22 years old, and I just, I'm not sure I've ever, ever been an adult. So I think that uh, it just... <laughs> And, you know, there, there's so many Michaels in the world that it's just been Turner my whole life. Well, I love it. And I, yeah, just wanted to let people know that I call you Turner because everyone calls you Turner. So, um, yes, we're here with Turner and he is a coach, a math teacher, and he's the athletic director at West Carter at high school. Um, I have the privilege of coaching with him with the women's volleyball team, and we're excited to have him here today. He was born and raised right here in Carteret County. He went to West Carteret. He has deep roots here in the community. And um, he's always someone that I I know a lot of folks look to for advice and really respect his opinion um, on things, especially things like this related to what's going on with our school system. So Turner, we're excited to have you here. Let's just hop into it. Fired up. Fired up. Great. Right. I'm excited. So I think, um, you know, I think, Michael, the, the big question that everybody wants to know is, you know, now that that the option for our public school kids to go back to school full time in person is not currently on the table, although I recognize that's the goal, right? That that's that's where we're that's where we're headed at some point in time. Um, tell us what's happening kind of behind the scenes in order to make this decision, because no decision for clarity, guys, no decision has been released about the logistics of what it's going to look like for Carteret County. And I feel like that's for good reason. So tell us about that. So, you know, there's a lot of kind of consternation out in the community about the, the lack of information that's coming out. Like, you know, there's no plan. There's no plan yet. And, you know, for me personally, you know, I've been a part of one of seven teams that the new superintendent put together to, you know, create a full picture of what the Carter County uh, public school response is going to be to plan B um, from the governor. So, you know, the, these different teams have been put together and they're, they're a pretty good microcosm of the entire system itself. It's not just principals, it's teachers, it's custodians, it's the lunch folks, it's the bus drivers. You know, there, there's such a great, you know, diversity of um, the different opinions and, the, and part of the decisions that are being made. So, you know, we're, we're really lucky in the fact that, you know, we don't have a superintendent that's going to come out of an office with a decree and then just send us forth to go, 
you know, make it happen. You know, he's listening to, you know, the people that are on the ground, the boots on the ground, if you will. Um, we've given a bunch of information. So now the, the you know, the, the next part that we need is, is we need information from our stakeholders, from our students and our parents um, and our teachers as well. And, you know, for folks like myself, like, you know, I've got to have, you know, my teacher survey that I fill out about, you know, what are my child care needs? And, and one of the things that, that are, that are going to help me be an educator and a parent as well. And then especially we need the information from the parents. Like, you know, are you comfortable sending your kid back to, you know, in-person face-to-face school, you know, whatever that ends up looking like, however many days that we can provide it, we will. And then, you know, part uh, face-to-face, part virtual, or, or are you not comfortable with that and you only want a virtual kind of setting? So, you know, we need that information back from parents to help us, you know, try to, try to make it a little more clear. Sure. And I think, you know, for you guys who are watching this, a couple things. Number one, you referenced, Michael, you referenced plan B. So again, plan A was going back to school full time in person. That's off the table for North Carolina public schools. Plan B is a combination of in-person learning and virtual learning. And plan C is just virtual learning. So as um, a local school system, any local school system has the right to choose a plan that is less stringent, especially if someone's in a hot spot, like, I don't mean, you know, if someone's in a hot spot, then their school system could choose to go completely virtual without in-person to start the school year out. Um, so we're talking about plan B, and I think that that's such an interesting thing. And I, I think that one of the things I'd love for you to, to speak to a little bit is you, you referenced seven teams, which, um, you know, in my mind is like a task force, right? And so each one of these seven teams is made up of, as you said, folks who are involved in the school system in all different ways. Um, but, but what are the topics of those? Can you tell us that? Like, what are the things that you guys are weighing in on? So the topics are the, the full range of, you know, what it is a school system does. So, you know, obviously there is content delivery. You know, that's important. That's the actual education that's taking place, how we're getting the information to the kids, how we're teaching them. Because, right. you know, it's going to be a challenge. And, you know, how are we going to get them to school? You know, so transportation's an issue. How are we going to feed them? So, you know, you know, making sure that we're can, you know, providing food service. How are we going to clean the building? I mean, surely we don't think that, you know, our, our smaller custodial staff is going to be able to, you know, turn this building over with the sanitation needs that are, that are required. So that's a big thing. You know, obviously I'm, a, I'm an athletics guy. So, you know, there's a, there's a real concern about, you know, athletics and how do we provide athletics and extracurriculars band and, and whatnot for our kids. So, you know, that's a team that's out there. So it's a, it's a full scale um, from logistics to, you know, cleaning to fee. I mean, it's, it's the whole field of emotions of what a school system is um, beyond just, you know, how are we going to, you know, teach them how to graph a quadratic equation? You're right. <laughs> right. Excuse me, what? Which I, which I don't know. But um, so <laughs> let's be clear. So, okay, so there are basically the superintendent is, is trying to help, you know, trying to make these decisions and he's asked for this help, right? Which comes mm-hmm. from the folks who are on the ground, boots on the ground people like you. So y'all are coming together with these seven different task forces that relate to the logistics and the, and the different things that need to happen. And then we've also got the surveys that we need to be filling out as parents that we can access on the Facebook page or on the Carteret County School System website. And then what is he going to do with that information? What, what are those logistics? So once the recommendations come in from the task forces and that the responses from the surveys have been taken into consideration, then does, does he make, will the superintendent make a decision of what he, or, or make a recommendation of what he thinks is best? I think what he'll do is he'll take all of the information that he has and he'll present it to our board of education. Okay. And then there'll be an agreement with, with the board itself. Um, I think I'm pretty sure about that one. Um, so, you know, it's, it, it's, a, it'll be a public thing. It's, you know, that's the, that's the beauty of it. You know, the, 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 there's the lack of transparency from what's going on with the teams isn't because we're trying to get away with anything. It's because we don't want to create confusion for folks. I mean, there's so many different misconceptions out there. One of my, one of the ones that I've heard the most is that, you can only have 50% of your student body come to your school. And that's not what the governor said in plan B. What the governor said in plan B was that he wanted to maintain six foot of social distancing and reducing the number of kids in the building. He didn't say anything about, you can only have half of your kids come back. Mm. Because if you're at a school with a hundred kids in it, your hundred kids could fit in the school. So, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, the, the point of the teams is to make sure that we do our very best for our stakeholders. You know, we're not trying to create a, uh, 
you know, just a, a blanket where it's, it's one size fits all. Like we're really trying to do our best to make sure that, you know, everybody is covered the best we can. And, you know, I, I again, me, Michael, the person, like I trust the process and I trust the fact that, you know, the folks that I know, know the plan's not going to be perfect and that the plan's probably going to have to change. I mean, we're not, we're not going to be able to, we're not going to be able to hit it a bullseye right on the start. Well, and, and, and the thing about that is that I think is so true is what's a bullseye for you as a parent, Michael, might not be a bullseye for me, you know? Yeah. I mean, and, and we, we're, we're just going to have to, I think, really be patient with each other. And I think be so grateful that every person that's involved in this process, I mean, I can't imagine the man hours you guys are putting in on these task forces and the thought and the care that's going into making these recommendations, right? And so, you know, I just appreciate so much everything that's happening behind the scenes. And, and do I want to know what's going to happen? Well, yeah, I, I want to know. What, I always want to know what's going to happen with everything. That's my personality, right? But I mean, I think everybody does, and yet I recognize that we've all got to keep our pants on a little bit here, right? And we've got to we've got to give you guys the time to work your magic behind the scenes and trust that you guys care about our kids the way we care about them, and that you guys are, are parents too. And and you know, and whether whether each person is or not, you guys really care. I think about our children. I, we know that about the Carteret County Schools, and I think for us to show you some grace. And you guys sure are showing us some because I know y'all are getting a lot of demands and a lot of requests and a lot of, you know, I, I, I can imagine the position that you guys are in and we just appreciate everything y'all are doing. Yeah. And you know, the, uh, I've said this before to some people, the the one thing, you know, that, that I love about our community, you know, you know there, there are so many great things about being a Carter Rican. You know, there's just this genetic backbone that you're just given from the get go of, being able to handle the hard times, you know, it's not, it's, it's a great place to live and it's a little piece of heaven, but it certainly isn't easy. And, you know, the one consistency to, to Carter County has, is our school system. You know, there's a reason why people move here with small kids to go to school. It's because we always produce. And so, you know, I, I try to remind folks about that. You know, I know everybody's amped up and it's been hard. It's been a long time since March the 13th, but, trust the system because you know the body of work that the school system has shown for as long as we can keep numbers has always been you know one of the very best around and you've had examples of that through hurricanes and snow day like all of those things so this is just one other thing in in that bookshelf of of things that you guys have to get over so that that's a really good point i think that's a great point and i think that's something that i think that on behalf of the folks that work for the school system, I feel like we're called to, to say, we need to really appreciate that. And I know that everybody's frustrated and wants, wants somebody to take it out on, but it sure shouldn't be our local school system and the people who are working hard to, to make this happen. The situation's far from ideal. We all recognize that. And yet we know that we all have a common goal, which is ultimately to get back to in-person, you know, in-school learning. And in the meantime, it's going to be you know, a little bit of an adventure to get there and we're all in it together. So I think that's, that's big. And I think one thing that I know a lot of folks would love to hear you weigh in on um, that of course is secondary to education, but is also a part of education for so many kids is sports, the athletics part. So tell us a little bit about what you see in the future there and, and kind of what's going into those decisions also. So the association came out after the uh, governor spoke on Tuesday and decided that we would move. Um, so sports are done by season. We have a fall, winter, and spring sports season at the high school level. Um, middle school is a little bit different. They, they're more of a sports season, whereas you know we have a uh, particular fall, winter, and spring. So our fall season traditionally starts on August 1st, and it'll run until the middle of October for some of the sports, early November for football. Um, and then we have winter sports in the middle with, with basketball and wrestling and uh, indoor track and then spring baseball and softball and women's soccer, why not? Um, so the system or the association rather has moved that start date from August 1st to September 1st. So okay. September 1st is now go time, green flag, boogity, boogity, boogity for all of the high school fall sports. Okay. Um, we, we just kind of straw polled some of our football players earlier in the week and you know, unfortunately, we had a bunch of kids that just did not um, – didn't think we'd have a season. Uh, there are a lot of parents – I mean, I, I, the number of texts I get about, are you going to play? Yes. In my heart of hearts, I believe we will have sports. 
Now, I think it's going to look different. I think the, the, the length of your season may be protracted because of, you know, moving things back. Or, you know, we may see the, the fall, spring, and winter sports rearranged a little bit. But I believe in the leadership, how bad it hurt their feelings to have to shut down spring sports and not have a, a basketball championship. I believe in my heart of hearts that we're going to play. Now, what it looks like, I don't know how long it's going to be. I don't know, but I believe we're going to play. I think that's so great. I think that's so great. And so, I mean, and just from a logistical standpoint, help me understand, does that mean do do practices start September 1st? Okay. Okay. So, so that would be the official start of the practice and the kids getting together. And then I guess, God, one big question for sports for sure is going to be not just for the athletes, but for the spectators, because Think about that. I mean, buddy, I've been slammed in some of those, you know, gyms watching. I mean, you are, there is not six feet. There's not six inches of distance <laughs> between, you know, the folks who are in there and it's hot. So, I mean, I'm sure that that's going to be a whole different, different thing also. That's going to be really interesting to see, but I think that everyone's dedication to making that happen is, is awesome. And, and, and look, and I think we recognize that that could change too. And, and it, you know, it, it could change a million times and in a million different ways. But I think to get these kids excited about that and have that on the horizon is awesome. Yeah. And I also, I also feel like from coaching with you, Turner, through when Florence came through, I mean, it was a, a similar situation with volleyball season. It got cut, cut short while well, we just had a hole in the middle of the season. But I mean, it sucks to say it, but these kids are also used to adapting through through some trials throughout their seasons and stuff like that. So that's not a positive, but it, it's good to know that, that they're willing to do anything to make playing sports work. Yeah. Well, remember the, the, the whole goal of high school athletics has nothing to do with the college, uh, college scholarship, Megan. Remember our job is to extend the classroom and give these kids life lessons. And, you know, we've had a lot of our friends that were out of work for a long time. Um, so, you know, there are people that look at athletics and they say, well, I mean, is that really that big a deal? Well, a little bit it is because yeah. now the kids are learning that occasionally things get taken away from you for things that are completely out of your control. control. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. And, and, and you know what? And I think not only are they out of your control, but you know, one of the lessons I think that the kids are learning is, you know, it's, 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 it's for the greater good. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, do we think that, that, I mean, it's about protecting those, who are the most susceptible, and it's about protecting those who who really could. I mean, not not that not that that this couldn't really take anybody down, but we all know that there are demographics that are you know more likely to be impacted by it than others. And so I think that that that's another great lesson too, is that this is the right thing to do because it's protecting other people. So right. I think that's that's a really good lesson too. Right. So I think what 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 you know I think really at this point what I want to know from you is if you could send a message to parents, you know, I mean, I think you're sending a message of hope right now. If you could send a message of, of let's, let's, let's certainly talk about hope, but let's also talk about what, what, what should we do? Tell me what to do. What do I do right now? If I'm, you know, just like you are, if I'm a parent, what, what can I do? I, I think you have to get out there and you have to have your voice heard via that survey. Um, it, it's, it's, it's vital to us. Like it's, it is 100% part of the, defi- the decision-making mechanism. I want people to understand that it, as far as I know, nothing has been decided and, and we need, we need that information. We need to know, you know, do, do you want your kid to come to school and be face to face again? Or, or are you concerned that, you know, you're, you know, you don't need to be bringing home you know, the virus or whatever, you don't, you know, you're worried about them coming home because, you know, you're in that, you know, you're in that demographic that you're, you're worried. So, you know, we need that information to help us build our plan to know where we go next. And then, you know, for, if I remove myself from being a teacher and I just think about my two kids, you know, I want my kids to be safe Mm -hmm. and I want my kids to be educated as well. But at the end of the day, I trust the people that make the decisions because, you know, we elected part of them and those elected people chose the other. So, you know, I, I think that that's, there is a, there's a leap of faith there, but if you're a Carter Rican, it's just, it's, it's where we are. And I, I think we have to, uh, I think we have to be willing to roll with some punches as well. I mean, we've certainly rolled with them to this point. Yeah. Um, I think unfortunately, this um, this epidemic's not going to be like a shower. 
And, you know, it certainly got turned on. I don't think it's just going to turn off. And right. I think we're going to be patient and, um, and show grace. I love that. I think that's so good. And I think your point about trusting the process and trusting the people that are involved, because it's not just, we did elect some of them, but golly, let's talk about it's greater than that. Let's talk about a track record of success and a track record of care. Right. So, I mean, let's, let's trust the hands that we're in that we, that we've always trusted and just know that, you know, make your voice heard. I think I love that, that advice, you know, and, and I think the fact that our input is welcome is huge. And I am resting so much easier now knowing that, just like you said in the beginning of this conversation, that there are people from every station in the school system that are giving their opinion and weighing in on these seven different kind of vital parts of the plan. I think that's so incredible. Yeah. Yeah, Absolutely. I love it. Well, okay. So I feel like that we've covered a lot here. Is there anything that we haven't asked you or that you feel like as an educator or as a parent that people really need to know or would want to know that we've not covered here? The, the only thing that I would like to let everybody know from the, the, you know, the educator standpoint is as bad as some folks are, you know, ready to get their kids back to school, we are more so ready to have them back. You know, there, this, <laughs> being an educator isn't, I mean, like, you know, you've heard all the, the cliches, but like it's true. I mean, it, this is this is who I am. I've had so many other opportunities to go do other things. You know, I, I don't know what I want to be when I grow up. I guess um, I never thought that I would be a teacher, but when I started doing it, this is what I love more than anything in the world. And I promise that everyone's like me. We want your kids back. We're going to keep them safe. We're keeping ourselves safe. So you know, at the end of the day, you know, they're, they're, they're we're ready to go back too. And so you know, we're we're all just really you know, trying to remain patient and, 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 you know, roll with it. I love that. I just teared up a little bit. I don't know. I saw, I saw that <laughs> happening very cute. I was like, Oh, good morning, everybody. I, know, that just, I don't know. That just got me. That just got me. Um, and that just reminded me, have you guys seen, I don't know where I saw it on. It was a dad. Actually, I saw it on um, Facebook or I don't know somewhere where some parent was like, you know what? No problem. You don't even need to let me know what the plan is. My kids will be there. We'll be there on, on August 17th. 8, 10 a.m., we'll be there. You know, I just thought that was so great. We coming. We are coming. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> anyway. Oh, you got her, Turner. Okay. Well, I'm excited to kind of see what's going to happen, and I really appreciate um, just, look, I mean, we all appreciate you and everything you do, and really appreciate you being here and giving us some insight kind of into what's happening, and I feel really good about about things as a, as a parent. So yeah. thank you. Thank you. Um, Meg, are you going to ask the magic question? I am. Okay, Turner, we have a big question for you. So it comes from a podcast that Mary Cheatham and I listen to. It's called For the Love with Jen Hatmaker. And she asked all of her guests this question. So we want to ask you this question. Turner, what is saving your life right now? Oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, so, you know, there, there's a couple things. Um, number one, uh, my F3 group that I work out with most mornings at 5.30. Um, those, uh, those guys have a way to keep me grounded and, uh, you know, you know my toes as well. And then, you know, Megan, uh, besides, you know, my family and my kids, you know, us getting the opportunity to, to get back to, you know, our volleyball workouts, this is 21 years of coaching and teaching for me. I've never gone six months without seeing my kids. Yeah. So, you know, I look forward to those Tuesday mornings and those Thursday evenings, uh, seeing you, um, especially seeing them, um, you know, and it, it just kind of, you know, it's that it's, it's definitely a driving, uh, it's a driving force to, yeah. you know, continue. Um, you know, a lot of people are like, you know, what are you getting done out there? I mean, yeah. are we getting a lot of volleyball done? Yeah. We're probably not getting a lot of volleyball done, but you know, as far as just, you know, seeing those faces and hearing those voices yeah. and, you know, and I hope in a little bit, you know, it's the same thing in return. Me too. And um, just so everyone knows, we played volleyball on the tennis courts last night. So it, it's hysterical. It's really great. But um, that was awesome. I totally agree with everything you said. And for anyone watching who might not know Turner, which Turner, you know a lot of people, so I don't, I don't know how many people. <laughs> Turner, I, I don't know anyone who cares more about what he does as an educator, athletic director, coach. So we're lucky to have people like you here in our community, people like you on these task forces. Um, just, we're, we're really excited. I don't have a kid, but 
I, it gives me comfort knowing that that you're behind the scenes. So thank you for joining us today. I almost got teared yes, up. Ma'am. Oh no. Okay. <sighs> We're good. Turner, I hope you have a great weekend. I'm going to. <laughs> good. Thank you. <laughs> thanks for being here. Yep. Thanks, guys. My turn. Right. See you soon. Oh man. oh, man. Why did we? Okay. <clears throat> I know. I know. That, that was really good. And I really do feel better. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Really. I feel kind of selfish. This was, this was a, this was a good one <laughs> for me. Just yeah. tell me what's happening. Yeah. yeah. I, can't, I really can't imagine as a parent how it feels. I mean, I, I can try to imagine, but shoot, there's so many things y'all have to take into consideration right now between childcare. I mean, schoolwork, your own jobs, what to do at home. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I yeah. You know, what I'm most excited about is I'm excited about, um, having a schedule again yeah. for my kids because yeah. I, I don't know how other parents feel, but golly y'all, I've just, I've let it go. I mean, I don't know. These kids are like, they're living their best lives. I mean, they are, you know, they just are kind of, you know, doing what they want to do within reason. And I, I don't think a lot of it is educational. <laughs> but also I saw this thing on Facebook the other day and it was talking about how you can look at all of the things like that. Like there's no routine. There's um, like, what are my kids doing? But in reality, they're never going to forget this time. In I know in a good way. Exactly I think. right. Yeah, you're right. You're yeah. right. And I'm just you know you're right. You're right. Yeah. And, and okay. I think I'm I'm just I'm a I'm a um, second guesser, and I'm you know I mean it's mom guilt, y'all. It's just good old fashioned mom guilt. I mean, what what else do we have if we don't have our mom guilt? So Aww. you know, um, yeah, yeah. And you know, I think this all also relates to um, as far as what is saving my life right now. One of the things that I have gotten into in the last week or so, I think it's because I feel like I have so little control over a lot mm -hmm. of parts of my life right now. I have gotten very into kind of getting organized and it has really, I Ooh. know, I know I've really been enjoying it. Like I, I've, I've attacked my bathroom and just, you know, gotten these little like, you know, plastic containers. containers? I, that kind of, I mean, Meg, you know, this is not like me. Yeah, I'm, you know, you can, I'm yeah, sure. you can just see the background of my office right now. If you could see my desk, everyone would start crying, but you know, I know. So I'm, I'm, I'm trying. So that's, that's kind of what's saving my life is it's, it's giving me some sense that I am moving forward, um, with something in my home, which of course is now where I spend all of my waking moments, all of your time. Well, that yes. also gives you a, a sense of accomplishment too. I, I always feel so good when I clean something out. So yes, I feel yes. Like, yes. yes. Yeah. What about you? What's saving your life? So mine actually goes along with that. And I swear I didn't make this up as you were saying it. I had this in my head before, but um, there's this Instagram um, profile and I found her through uh, Simplified, Emily Lay Simplified. It's her sister and she has this whole Instagram. It's at TV Cowan, C-O-W-A-N. And she has life hacks. So all organization hacks, life hacks. It's all these tips from her mom. She calls them Nana tips. And um, it's like ways to pack board games so they take up less space. It's like the simplest, easiest organization hacks to make your house more functional. Oh, yeah, it's I good. Did yeah. you see T T B T V? Okay, like the television. I could be completely wrong. I'll post it. Okay, um, you post it. Yeah, good. Yeah. Okay. But it's it's really fun to follow. I love seeing her little stories. There, it's thing so simple, but things that you never would have thought of. Like you can write with a sharpie, a water based sharpie on Tupperware the date that it, like, it's little things like that. It's good. It's yeah. really good. Yeah. 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 That's good. No, I know. I'm excited about that. Good. Okay, good. Well, good. I'm excited you're organized. Well, I mean, temporarily and partially, <laughs> let's be honest. But I mean, you know, I'm, I'm trying. I'm working on it. it. I love okay. it. That's exactly good. right. That's right. Oh, I, well, thank you. And thank you for, um, and it, did, did it make you cringe the whole time that I was calling Michael Michael? I just felt like I needed to use a professional name. I think most people, okay, I think it's half and half. He, okay. Like a lot of people call him Michael. Some people call him Turner. Yeah. Okay. It's very strange well, just, to hear Michael, but I just decided, very, I decided yeah. to, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, who is that? <laughs> I'm like, Michael who? Like when people call me Mary and we're like, what, who is that? <laughs> yeah. I'm tickled. Well, that yeah. was fun. I hope you have a great weekend and um, continue on organizing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Enjoy. Thanks for being here.